It's hard to believe that gaming consoles have been around for almost four decades now, and the console that made it popular in homes was the Atari 2600. So as an homage to this nostalgic wonder and as a means to show you some programming basics, I'm going to walk you through how to create a simple Atari game. We're going to need two programs in order to do this, both of which you can find at my forum page at the link below. The first one is an Atari emulator called Stella. This allows you to play Atari games on your computer. If you want more information on emulators, be sure to check out my video on game emulation. Now after you have Stella installed, the next thing you need is the Batari Basic programming language and the visual interface for it called Visual BB. I've put both of these as well as their updates into a single executable that you can download and install. Now you should see a Visual BB icon on your desktop. Just double click on it to launch the program and once it opens create a new project by going to File New Project. Give it a name and then save it to wherever you want on your computer. You should see a new project folder pop up in the Project Explorer, and if you double click on default.bas, you will see the script editor open up. The first thing that we need to do is create a play field for our game. In the old days you'd have to code it out manually, but in Visual BB you can just right click on the play fields folder and select add new item. Then choose play field, give it a name, and then click OK. Now if you expand the Playfields folder, you should see the one that you just created. Just double click on it and the editor should open up. Basically all you have to do here is click on the squares that you want to color and just draw out a background for your game. If you want to erase a square, just hold down the control key on your keyboard and then click on that square. Then click on the save icon to save the changes. Now click back on the default.bas tab and drag your game background from the Project Explorer directly to the code. As you can see, the X's represent a colored square and the dots represent a blank square. Next we'll need to set the colors of the background. In Atari you have to use TIA values for colors. TIA or Television Interface Adapter values were code representations of color that told the television exactly which color to display. To find the value for your color, go to View TIA Palette, then click on the color and copy down either the hex value or the decimal value. Both should work. To set the color of the background, type COLUBK underneath the playfield code and then set it equal to the color value that you copied down. Since the score and the sprites are black by default, it's best if you set the background equal to something besides black. If you want to set the playfield color, just type COLUPF and set it equal to a different color value. If you try to compile and play the game at this point, the screen will just flicker. That's because in Atari games, if you're not constantly writing something on the screen, the screen will be blank. So we need to create a loop that is constantly writing something on the screen. So skip a line below the colors and create a function called draw underscore loop. Then hit enter and type draw screen, which will output the information on the screen. Then hit enter again and type go to draw underscore loop, which tells the program to repeat the function indefinitely. Then hit enter again and you'll notice that the code automatically indents itself over. It's important to note that if your code isn't correctly indented, it will cause an error. Now click save and then click on the compile button at the top. If you have any errors, it will tell you at the bottom of the screen in the messages section. If you don't have any errors, click run to test the program. You should see your play field pop up in the Atari emulator. Okay, next we need to create some characters or sprites as they're called in the gaming world. Right click on your sprites folder in the project explorer and select add new item. Then choose sprite, give it a name and click OK. Now you can expand your sprites folder and double click on your sprite. Then edit it the same way that you edited the play field. Once you're through, click save, then create another sprite to represent the bad guy. The basic Atari game can only support two sprites. There are ways to get around that, so if you're interested, feel free to research it. Once you have that created and saved, click back on the default.bas tab. You want to add some blank lines above the draw loop function, then drag your sprites over and position them above the function. You can delete the sprite titles as we won't be needing them. And after doing that you'll see that both of them have the name of Player Zero. So you want to change the name of the bad guy sprite to Player One. 
Now we need to position the sprites on the screen. So above player zero, type player zero x equals 50 colon player zero y equals 50. This will position the sprite 50 clicks to the right on the x-axis from the top corner and 50 clicks down on the y-axis from the top left corner. Then hit enter and type player 1x equals 20 colon player 1y equals 20 to position player 1. Now if you click save, compile, and run, you should see your sprites in the play field. Next we'll make a missile object by adding a line below the player locations and typing missile zero height equals four colon missile zero y equals 255, which creates a missile for player zero and sets its height to four and has it firing vertical along the y axis. If you wish, you can change the y to an x and have it firing horizontal. Now hit enter and type NUSIZ0 equals 16, which sets the number of missiles and sprites in relation to each other. One means one missile and six means one sprite to each missile. Next you want to hit enter and type sprites to create a sprites function. This turns all the code below it into a function. Skip down below the end of the player one code and start typing if missile zero y is greater than 240 then go to skip. Hit enter and type missile zero y equals missile zero y minus two colon go to draw underscore loop. This checks to see if a missile has already been fired and if one hasn't, it tells it to go to the skip function and then resets the missile position. Now hit enter again and create the skip function by typing if joy zero fire, then missile zero y equals player zero y minus two colon missile zero x equals player zero x plus four, which fires the missile every time the spacebar is pressed. Before compiling it, we need to expand the drawing loop to include the sprite functions. So change the go to draw underscore loop to go to sprites, then save, compile, and run it. And whenever you press the space bar, player zero will start shooting missiles. Now it's time to add some controls. The first control will make player one chase after player zero. So make a space below the draw screen line and type if player 1y is less than player 0y then player 1y equals player 1 plus 1. This says that if player 1 is to the left of player 0 then it should move left. Now we'll do the same for the up, down, and right controls. Hit enter and type if player 1y is greater than player 0y then player 1y equals player 1y minus 1. Hit enter again and type if player 1x is less than player 0x, then player 1x equals player 1x plus 1. Hit enter again and type if player 1x is greater than player 0x, then player 1x equals player 1x minus 1. Then hit enter one last time and type player 1x equals player 1x colon player 1y equals player 1y. And this updates the player 1 values. Next, let's add some movement to player zero. Skip a line and type if joy zero up, then player zero y equals player zero y minus one colon go to jump. This moves the sprite up along the y axis whenever the up arrow button is pressed. Now we'll do the same for the remaining buttons. So hit enter and type if joy zero down, then player zero y equals player zero y plus one colon go to jump. Hit enter again and type if joy zero left, then player zero x equals player zero x minus one colon go to jump. Hit enter again and type if joy zero right, then player zero x equals player zero x plus one colon go to jump. Now as you can see, we're telling these lines to go to a jump function. So let's go ahead and create that now. Hit enter and type jump. This adds the go to sprites line into the jump function. Then hit save, compile, and play it to test it out. Lastly, we need to add collision detection and scores. So skip a line under the keyboard controls and type if collision parentheses missile zero comma player one end parentheses then score equals score plus one colon player one x equals rand forward slash two colon player one y equals zero colon missile zero y equals 255. This checks to see if there's been a collision between the missile and player one. If so, then it adds one point to the score and changes the position of player one to a random location and resets the missile location. 
hit enter and type if collision parentheses player zero comma player one end parentheses then score equals score minus one colon player one x equals rand forward slash two colon player one y equals zero colon missile zero y equals 255 which checks to see if player zero and player one have had a collision and if so it subtracts a point from the score and then changes the position of player one to a random location and then resets the missile location. Now if you hit save, compile, and run you can play the finished game. The object is to shoot player one before it hits you. You get points if you shoot it and you lose points if it gets to you before you shoot it. If you want to send this game to someone else, you can find it if you go to the game folder, the bin folder, and then within the bin folder you should see your game with a .bin extension. You can rename it to whatever you want and send it to friends, and then they can open it up and play it by installing the Stella emulator from the Stella Atari website. Once you've mastered the basics of this tutorial, you can visit my forum to learn how to add title screens, boundaries, animations, and sounds to your game. You can also find tons of other examples and resources that should help you make some awesome Atari games. Be sure to check out Tinkernut.com on Facebook and Twitter. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to Tinkernut.com.